Well, if, if anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? There is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. All right. That was Kamala Harris in her own words. She said that not much will change uh, going into her presidency. Uh, not much will change and be different from what we saw in the last, let's just go ahead and say four years. Uh, and that's helpful, actually, when we're looking at this from the standpoint of trying to figure out how to prosper in a Kamala Harris presidency. So there are definitely some sectors that have benefited <clears throat> from the Biden uh, presidency. And since she's saying she's not going to change anything, let's take her at her word. Uh, we do know that with regard to the economy, she hasn't really fleshed out much of an agenda at all. She's mentioned price caps, which ain't happening, okay? You got enough smart people in the Senate and the Congress and in the staffs that read history books and understand that we tried that already. In 1971, under Nixon, it didn't work well at all. It led to gas shortages, actually, okay? Led to chicken shortages, all kinds of shortages, okay? Uh, so we don't want to do that. We're not going to do that. And beyond that, Another thing that, uh, and look, this is just the truth, guys. Kamala Harris doesn't understand the fact that grocery stores, for example, because food inflation is the big one. I don't care if you're gay, straight, black, white, old, young, doesn't matter. We all need to eat, right? So uh, food inflation would not be impacted by any investigation that she would do on price gouging because pre-tax supermarket uh Profit margins are about 2.2%. Okay, that's pre-tax, right? After tax on average, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.7%. Uh, so that's a non-starter. She's talked about $25,000 going to uh, first-time home buyers. That's also something that's going to be <clears throat> either curtailed tremendously or it's not going to happen at all because she's going to find out that the issue with home ownership, part of the issue is there's a shortage of homes. Now, if she wants to start incentivizing home builders to create more capacity, that may help to, you know, uh, meet the demand that's out there. Okay. Uh, but in terms of this $25,000, if she just does that, she's going to create more demand without an adequate supply. We're already dealing with a short supply in most of these housing markets in the first place. So that will actually make the situation worse. But if she does it, then it'll be damn good news for those of us who own real estate because it'll push those prices up. All right. Won't be good news for those who are looking to buy real estate. But uh, we have that. Now, the other thing that like Donald Trump, we can rest assured that will definitely continue to occur under a Kamala Harris presidency is government spending gone wild. All right. I do think that it will, um, provided there's no other like 2020 type event, uh, it won't be as crazy under Trump as it will be under Kamala. Now, objectively, the reason I say that is because Kamala Harris already said she's not going to change anything. We have not heard her talk about peace in uh, Eastern Europe, okay, between Ukraine and Russia. What we have seen her do was stand next to Vladimir Zelensky uh, and shake his hand as he walked out of here with $8 billion a few weeks ago. So we can rest assured that she's probably going to keep that going. Now, if we look at a sector that uh, would benefit from that, it would definitely be the defense sector. Now, in the Trump video I talked about, the fact that you may have some moral consternation with investing in that, <clears throat> knowing, <clears throat> excuse me, especially knowing how we're prosecuting a proxy war and not coming to the table. But that's up to you. Again, this is not investment advice. This is just a discussion on how we may think about prospering in either case. In this particular video, we're going over Kamala Harris. So I am, look, Kamala Harris is endorsed by none other than Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney is the uh, most bloodthirsty politician uh, America has had 
since um, <clears throat> probably uh, Old Hickory, uh, President uh, Andrew Jackson. Um, so you can rest assured you're not getting his endorsement unless you have a, you know, openness. He didn't just out of the blue endorse her. He's talked to her and he wants war in Iran and he'd love to see this thing in Russia continue. So, you know, that'll be good for the bottom line of the Raytheons, the, um, North Grumman's. General Dynamics, and so on, okay? Um, and again, that's up to you whether or not you want to uh, participate in that. Now, another <clears throat> outcropping of government spending gone wild, of course, is gold, right? Uh, we've seen gold run up. We are 2,700, next stop 3,000 at some point, if we're to believe what Goldman Sachs is saying. Uh, and you know that as we spend this money and the dollar becomes less valuable, inflation goes up, gold preserves the buying power of your fiat currency. Uh, so I believe that we definitely will see a marked increase in government spending. It's really going to accelerate under Kamala Harris. We may be looking at a situation where in four years, we may be just shy of $50 trillion, okay? We're already at $36 trillion, uh, for all intents and purposes, okay? And you get several martial conflicts going on, okay? We got an influx of new Americans coming into the country that they're spending money on. And, uh, hey, we uh, Kamala Harris is not talking about closing any government agency, okay, or slowing down on government hiring, this latest jobs report, uh, a vast majority of the jobs created, and this has been true for all of the jobs created during the Biden administration, Biden-Harris administration, they've been government jobs, okay? A large portion, it's like the second place uh, category is government jobs behind healthcare. Healthcare because, you know, we got an aging population, of course, right? So the baby boomers are aging. It's a business to be in. Now, let's talk about another sector. We talked about defense. We talked about spending and gold. Let's talk about the energy sector. Now, with Trump, we, and you got to go back and watch that video, the Trump energy sector benefited from uh, fossil fuels by and large. Now, what the Democrats have made no bones about is that they want to stake their claim on renewables. The problem is when we get the right saying that, uh, no, we should stick with um, fossil fuels, which are finite, and the left saying, oh, we got to uh, switch over to um, renewables with no weaning period. That's just silly, right? But you're seeing in places like California where there's legislation to pretty much outlaw internal combustion engine cars by 2030. Now, and whenever the government has to come in and move an industry like that, it rarely works out. The government did not have to get involved to convince you to pick up uh, one of these smartphones, right? Um, it was just better technology. It was more convenient. And now, you know, everybody has one. So with the clean energy sector or renewable energy sector, um, a couple of things here. Now, Biden, and she says she's not going to do anything different from Biden. Biden's push for green energy, uh, and he couched it in addressing climate change. Uh, that was a central theme to their whole entire administration, right? So they did have um, major proposals around investing in renewable energy. And in fact, the Inflation Reduction Act was really, uh, by and large, a gift to the renewable energy industry, okay? Hasn't reduced inflation now, has it? So Biden's administration targeted net zero carbon emissions by 2050 for the nation. Yeah, whatever, right? Uh, so those initiatives aim at solar, wind, and electric vehicles. So if she wins, you can best believe that those uh, categories will continue to see investment. Now, because it's a nascent sector of the economy, you know, it's a roulette wheel in terms of the companies that will come out of this uh, long term, and we are investors here at Soldiers of Finance. We're not traders. So when you look at it from a long term standpoint, 
you might want to look at some of the S&P 500 companies that are developing out these technologies. Or we did the report on um, the sm uh, small modular nuclear reactor technology that's being developed. And you've got companies like Microsoft and uh, Amazon in on that. Okay, so that may be a play, uh, taking advantage of those new technologies through the bigger players. Okay, so solar and wind energy, uh, EV manufacturers, battery manufacturers, that technology, they have seen gains during the Biden administration. Uh, so you, and again, I'm just calling out companies. I'm not encouraging you to invest uh, in anything. All right, but some com companies, these are the smaller players. Uh, Next Era Energy, Energy um, Enphase, of course, there's Tesla, all right, uh, a host of others, okay, have benefited from the Biden administration policies and the tax credits coming out of those policies. Now, um, as I said, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, it uh, did more for the green energy companies um, by incentivizing renewal projects, much more for them than it did for uh, to lower inflation. Let me give you one more. Now, how this will pan out, if it will pan out, I don't know. But the Biden administration had uh, expressed some desire to expand the Medicare Advantage program. OK, now this is an entitlement program right now. The recipients are uh, those 65 years and older who have met um, certain credit requirements for work throughout their lifetime, and those who have certain ailments like um, ALS or Lou Gehrig's uh, disease. So Biden had talked about, you know, expanding this program to maybe include a broader swath of the population. Now, we'll keep an eye on that, but if that happens, then of course uh, there will be a corresponding uh, increase in demand for uh, certain medical devices, uh, medications, and then we can, you know, take a look at how that might affect the uh, companies like Johnson & Johnson from, you know, an equipment uh, perspective or the Pfizer's of the world, so on and so forth. Okay. So, that's so what we got going on. I'm going to go ahead and tag uh, the previous video we did uh, this is part two. Part one was, uh, Trump. So somewhere over here, uh, and you can check that out. And again, not financial advice. We're just kind of looking at the lay of the land because our mission is no matter who wins that election, our responsibility is to continue to prosper and come out of this in 2028 smelling like roses. Okay. Talk to you soon.